34. Use the standard free energy data in Appendix G to determine the free energy change for each of the following reactions, which are run under standard state conditions and 25 degrees Celsius, and then identify each as either spontaneous or non-spontaneous at these conditions. Okay, so we have our balanced equation, O2 gas plus N2 gas yields 2 NO gas, and because of this, we have to find the free energy change. A free energy change, any change is always represented by that delta, that triangle, final minus initial, right? Right minus left in this case. And free energy talks about Gibbs free energy. So Gibbs starts with a G. So this would be finding a delta G value. Since we're using standard values and it's standard state conditions, we're solving for a delta G notch. That little notch in the upper right-hand corner means that we have textbook values for our substances in our equation. So I went to the back of the textbook to find out what those values are. For all elemental substances, so your diatomics, O2 gas and N2 gas, you have zero kilojoules per mole that's being you know made or used. So zero delta G. NO has 87.6. Now, from these values, how are we going to find that overall free energy change? Well, here's the formula right here. Delta G for the whole entire reaction, Rxn is just reaction, is the sum. This little symbol means sum, aka addition, right? Sum of the products minus the sum of your reactants. So products minus reactants. Now, are these numbers going to be the same or are they going to be different? Well, that goes by the coefficients in the front of your balanced equation, right? How many moles you have of each. I had one O2, one N2, and two NOs. Those numbers is what you're going to be multiplying your delta G values by. So since you have one O2, you'll take one and times it by zero. One N2... So one times it by zero, two NOs. So I take the 87.6 and times it by two. Now we need to sum up the sides. Literally, it was O2 gas plus N2 gas. So this plus this. And zero plus zero is just zero. So we already know what that side is. But now let's just go to Calci to find out what two times 87.6 is, right? So I'm going to say two times 87.6. And I get 175.2. Now I have my two values to plug in into my equation. So here we go. Delta G for the whole entire reaction equals products, which is one, whoop, let's see, 175.2 minus... Zero. We got this right from this part. We don't need Galki. Delta G for the whole entire reaction is 175.2. And now, what are the units? Well, for each one, we took kilojoule per mole, and we times it by these coefficient values. Those coefficients are mole values. So mole cancels out with mole, and we're left with just kilojoules. So this would just be in kilojoules. So that's the answer. Free energy change, 175.2 kilojoules. Now, from that information, we can find out, was this reaction spontaneous or not spontaneous? Well, this is the information that we need to know at the bottom. If your delta G is less than zero, that means that it's a negative value. Then your reaction is spontaneous, meaning that it doesn't need any additional energy from any outside source to, to produce the NO gas. However, if your delta G is greater than zero, that means that it's a positive. You do need some energy from an outside source to make it run. That's why it's non-spontaneous. Here, 175.2, that's a positive value. We're greater than zero. So this would be non-spontaneous. So in order for this to run, you do need some type of external source of energy. And then you'll form the product. And that's it. What do you think? 
Hope for this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope to be talking to you in future lessons. Hope you have a great day. Keep studying hard. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool YouTube channel. Thank you for that. And talk to you soon. Bye-bye.